Ram, 
Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Eti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pricharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschachate Shatarine Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Okay, reading from the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 5, text number 7. The Ujang 5, chapter 5. Yoga, Yukto, Vishud Atma, Vijit Atma, Jitendriya, Sarva, But Atma, But Atma, Kurvan, Api, Na, Lipyate, Yoga Yukto Vishud Atma, Vijit Atma Jitendriya, Sarva Bhut Atma Bhut Atma, Kurvan Apina Lipyate, Yoga Yukto Vishud Atma, Vijit Atma Jitendriya, Sarva Bhut Atma Bhut Atma, Kurvan Apina Lipyate Yoga Yukto Vishud Atma Vijit Atma Jitendriya Sarva Bhut Atma Bhut Atma Kurvan apina lipyate. Yoga yukto vishutatma. Yoga yukto vishutatma. Vijitatma jitantriya. Vijitatma jitantriya. Sama putatma putatma. Sama putatma putatma. lipyate.
Yoga Yukta, engaged in devotional service. Vishuddha Atma, a purified soul. Vijita Atma, self control. Jitta Indriya, having conquered the senses, Sarva Buddha, to all living entities, Atma Buddha Atma, compassionate. Kurvan Api, sorry. Uh, although engaged in work, although engaged in work, na, never. Lipyate is entangled, translation, one who works in devotion, who is a pure soul and who controls his mind and senses is dear to everyone and everyone is dear to him, though always working, such a man is never entangled.
purport by Srila Prabhupada. One who is on the path of liberation by Krishna consciousness is very dear to every living being and every living being is dear to him. This is due to his Krishna consciousness. Such a person cannot think of any living being as separate from Krishna, just as the leaves and branches of a tree are not separate from the tree. He knows very well that by pouring water on the root of the tree, the water will be distributed to all the leaves and branches. Or by supplying food to the stomach, the energy is automatically distributed throughout the body. Because one who works in Krishna consciousness is servant to all, he is very dear to everyone. And because everyone is satisfied by his work, he is pure in consciousness. Because he is pure in consciousness, his mind is completely controlled. And because his mind is controlled, his senses are also controlled. Because his mind is always fixed on Krishna, there is no chance of his being deviated from Krishna, nor is there a chance that he will engage his senses in matters other than the service of the Lord. He does not like to hear anything except topics relating to Krishna. He does not like to, to eat anything which is not which is not offered to Krishna and he does not wish to go anywhere if Krishna is not involved. Therefore his senses are controlled. A man of controlled senses cannot be offensive to anyone. One may ask, why then was Arjuna offensive in battle? In other words, wasn't he in, in Krishna consciousness? Arjuna was only superficially offensive because, as has already been explained in the second chapter, all the assembled persons on the battlefield would continue to live individually as the soul cannot be slain. So, spiritually, no one was killed on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Only their dresses were changed by the order of Krishna, who was personally present. Therefore, Arjuna, while fighting on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, was not really fighting at all. He was simply carrying out the orders of Krishna in full Krishna consciousness. Such a person is never entangled in the reactions of work. We have to understand that this last, uh, this anger is coming about because we did not get our material desires. And when we do get what we want materially, when our material desires are satisfied, then we become greedy for more. Hmm, nobody says, now I have had enough, now I am satisfied. But we all, we want more, it's not enough. 
And so in this way, there are three gates into hell, lust, anger, and greed. And there are three more things which we have to also guard against, which are the enemies of a devotee. Illusion. Illusion is thinking, first of all, we are thinking, I am the body. We are thinking, this, this, I am the body and everything in relation to the body is mine. Even though sometimes we may be brahmachari and renounced, but still we are very attached to things. There's a pastime took place in relation to the great devotee Ramanuj Acharya. Ramanuj Acharya, he found there was one devoted couple, husband and wife, and he liked them very much and he spent a lot of time with them, talking to them and preaching to them. So the other brahmacharis were thinking, Guru Maharaj, why do you spend so much time with them? They're, fa they're householders, they're in family life, you know, they're fallen souls. But Ramanujacharya said, Oh, you don't know how advanced these couple are. They're very spiritually advanced. And so he told them, he said, what you can do is that you go to their home one night. You go late in the night when they're asleep. Go to their home and steal all their jewelry, steal all their wealth. So the brahmacharis decided they would do what the Guru Maharaj said. So one night, they went to this home of this couple while they were sleeping and they started to take all their jewelry. Mm, it's customary in the Vedic culture, people will keep their wealth in jewelry, in gold, in ornaments. Mm, they don't worry about cars and uh, <laughs> other electronic devices. But the gold ornaments, the value will always increase. So the brahmacharis went there into the home of the couple, and the couple were laying, sleeping, resting, and they began to steal all the jewelry. And they saw the wife was wearing some of the ornaments while she was laying on the bed. She was dressed with some ornaments on. So they, they started to take them off the body of the woman. But while one of the men was taking the ornaments off, the woman turned over 
And when she turned over, then the brahmacharis got afraid and they ran away. The brahmacharis ran away when the woman turned over and they thought she... And then when the brahmacharis ran away, the husband woke up and he said to his wife, he said, why did you do that? Why did you frighten the brahmacharis? Let them take all the ornaments they want. And the wife said, the woman said, well, I was just turning over to make it easier for him so he could take the ornaments. So anyway, the brahmacharis went back with all the ornaments and the next day the couple came to temple and they asked them, is everything okay? And they said, yes, everything's fine, no problem. They didn't complain, they didn't say, no, we, somebody's taken all of our wealth, oh, we lost everything, no, they didn't say anything. But then Ramanujacharya, he arranged, he, he knew that the brahmacharis, every day they'll put out their cloth to dry. So he arranged for one person to move all their cloth around and steal some of the cloths. And so when the brahmacharis all went to get their cloth, they said, eh, who's taking my cloth? <laughs> Yeah, they were they were so attached to little pieces of cloth. And they began to fight and argue with each other. You took my cloth. So Ramanujacharya came and he said to them, he said, you see. You, you, you're thinking because you're a brahmachari, you're so advanced, but you're so attached to your little pieces of cloth. <laughs> and that couple, the householder couple, you took away all their jewelry, they didn't say anything, they didn't complain at all. really advanced and who is not. It's not just that we can judge a person's spiritual advancement by his ashram. So we're hearing in this verse, Lord Krishna is describing how we should become detached from the material situation. And the way to become detached from the material situation is by being attached to Krishna. If we see Krishna in everyone and in everything, then we will be peaceful, our mind will be pure. We have to practice seeing Krishna everywhere. 
We have to see through the eyes of the scriptures. Sometimes people would not understand. We would tell them, Prabhupada is a perfect master. He has perfect senses. He's pure. They said, well, why is he wearing glasses? Hmm. Well, you have to understand that the, the glasses are just simply there to facilitate seeing the objects, but he still sees Krishna everywhere. He is not using material vision, he is using spiritual vision. Just like Prabhupada gives the example about Arjuna fighting in the battle of Kurukshetra. And so people, then somebody saying, oh, he's offensive, he's killing people, it's not good, he's supposed to be a devotee. He should be kind to everyone. But Arjuna was kind to everyone. Everyone who was killed by Arjuna, they were all liberated to the spiritual world. Because they were killed in the presence of Lord Krishna. Anyone who gives up the body in the presence of Krishna, then they're very fortunate, they go back to Godhead. Sometimes we see people leaving the body, they will bring the dying person and place them in front of the deities so that they can give up the body seeing the form of the Lord. Srila Prabhupada left the world in Vrindavan with the pictures of the deities in front of him. So devotees, they will want to utilize everything for the service of Krishna. We, we, can, we can go anywhere for Krishna's service. But if there's no service to Krishna, then we don't want to go. We have no interest. It has to be connected to Krishna. Of course, sometimes it's difficult, sometimes for her, there, I know one family, the lady is a very good devotee, and so sometimes the family, they want to go to cinema, they want to go and see some movie, and she's going, oh no, <laughs> but because she's the mother, she has to go with the family. So she'll go, she'll take her beats with her and sit and chant. <laughs> it's not a very convenient situation, but what can you do? The children grow up, the children went to college, and she moved to Vrindavan. Now she lives in Vrindavan. Mm. 
the children are away in USA studying in the college there. And she's happy living in the holy dam, serving the deities. So this is devotee. Devotees, they want to put Krishna in the center of all of their activities. We don't want to do anything which is not connected to Krishna. And in this way, we keep the mind and senses controlled. We have to make friends with the mind, make the mind our friend by bringing it to Krishna. And train our senses that they will be peaceful and they will not disturb us with all kinds of desires. So Krishna consciousness is practice. We have to practice. Prabhupada gives the example, just like the child has to practice to walk. In the beginning, child cannot walk, and sometimes the child will fall and get hurt. But with practice, certainly the child will walk. And in the same way, if we practice controlling the mind and senses, regularly hearing and chanting about Krishna, then naturally we will become Krishna conscious. And we will think of Krishna constantly. In this way our life will become successful. Are there any questions? Consciousness. Well, what's important is your daily practice. You have to do sadhana. You have to chant in the morning, maybe before you go to work, ideally. You get up in the morning and after bathing and so on, you want to chant. And if you chant nicely, and then you can also read a little bit or hear something from the scriptures, then it will help you to be Krishna conscious throughout your work. Mm. The morning hours are very important for us. By, because that's where we get our spiritual strength to remember Krishna. Just like you're all coming in the morning for Mongol RTE, we have a morning program. That morning program is very powerful. It makes it so natural for us to think of Krishna throughout the day. Mm. So we have morning program, we have evening program. 
this way we're, we're thinking of Krishna. You take rest at night, you dream about Krishna. Mm. And wake up the next morning and come and see Krishna. So this is how we can remember how we work for Krishna, by doing sadhana. Brenda? Yes, well, you have to get enough sleep. You have to get enough so that you can do your service for Krishna. At the same time, we don't want to sleep too much or sleep too little. No, of course, when we're traveling, it will be difficult. You're away from home. You don't have the same regulation, it's difficult. Sometimes we get sick, sometimes you have fever, sometimes you're just exhausted, you just need to rest. But it said the Goswamis, the Goswamis, they conquered over eating and sleeping. Sankhya Purva Kanamagana Natibi Kalovasani Krito Nidrahara Vihara Kari Vijito Chaitanya Dino Chayo Radha Krishna Padara Vinda Bhajana Nande Namataliko Bande Rupa Sanatana Rakuja Go Shri Jiva Gopala Go The Goswamis conquered over eating and sleeping. They just forgot about sleeping because they were so Krishna conscious. They were always chanting and dancing and hearing about Krishna. So they, they just forgot about sleeping. They wouldn't be attached also. They didn't have beds, you know. They would sleep under a different tree. You know, we go home, we go back to our home and you see the bed. Oh, I'll take a rest. You see the bed, you know, I'll lay down for a while. <laughs> and that's finished. Then fall asleep. Wake up hours later.
in Krishna consciousness and dwell and not chanting and listening and not in Krishna consciousness. So I'm a little doubtful whether or not I, I, can I return back to the uh, spiritual world. She, she said that sometimes when she's doing devotional service, she's in Krishna consciousness. But sometimes when she's not uh, doing service, she's not in Krishna consciousness. So if what so in that case, um, she's a little bit um, doubtful. If she can go back to Godhead. Yes. If you want to go back to Godhead, you have to be pure. <laughs> so you have to overcome this mixed consciousness. Your consciousness is not pure. Sometimes you're Krishna conscious, sometimes you're not. So when you understand you're not in Krishna consciousness, then you should do something about it. You have to get your japa beads and ch chant more. Or you have to pick up Prabhupada's books and start reading more. And as soon as you take shelter of Krishna, then the Maya will go away and you'll be back in Krishna consciousness. So you, you have to, we have to train our mind and senses. Say no to Maya. And be ready to embrace Krishna and hold on to Krishna's lotus feet. And so you, we are all facing these challenges every moment. Maya is there waiting to attract us, to catch us. We have to be on guard. Keep Maya away. By Krishna consciousness. If we are in Krishna consciousness, Maya will not touch you. So, because we are still uh, trying to become pure, we're not yet we, we're still, we still have some attachment to the material energy. So sometimes you're Krishna conscious and other times you're not. Now you, we, gradually we recognize these things. We recognize when I'm Krishna conscious and when I'm not. And so when we see we're not in Krishna consciousness, you have to do something about it. You have to get out of Maya. And you, we know how to do it, just simply by calling out to Krishna. Maya will stay far away. Yes. Any other question? Yes. Samudra Shanti. Mataji. Shifu. Krishna. 
Krishna consciousness and Krishna and Bhakti Yoga. Well, Krishna, we're referring to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Bhagavan, Sri Krishna, the person. Krishna is the Supreme Person. He plays the flute. He's decorated with a peacock feather on his head. You can see Krishna in the picture here. With Lord Balaram. So Krishna is the cowherd boy. The son of Nanda Maharaj. Krishnaya Vasudevaya Devaki Nanda Nayacha Nanda Gopa Komaraya Govindaya Namo Namaha the, This is des describing Lord Krishna. He is the son of Vasudev. And he is loved by Devaki. Ananda Maharaj. And he's a cowherd boy and plays with all the other cowherd boys in Vrindavan. But he's the supreme original personality of Godhead, the, the source of everything. Krishna consciousness means to be conscious, to remember Lord Krishna. To think of Krishna, to use our mind to think of Krishna. To chant Krishna's name. If you're in Krishna consciousness, then you'll be thinking of Krishna. You will only eat food offered to Krishna. And we only go where Krishna's activities are being performed. And then bhakti, Bhakti is referring to the process of devotional service. So bhakti is the process by which we can develop our love for Krishna. And it's centered around hearing and chanting. Understand? Mm -hmm. Yes, this is a Kadisha, huh? Or Subhama Gopa. Spiritual grade or material grade, um, and to, if 
are there any limits for the degree of the degree? Well, for the service of Krishna, there's no limit. And it's, of course, anything in relation to Krishna is not material. So you have agreed for devotional service, that is very good, that is spiritual. Yeah, we say desire, we cannot stop desire, but we can purify desire. So material desires are in relation to the body, but spiritual desires are in relation to Krishna and Krishna's service. So your desires are not material. And there's no limit. You can desire more and more. Devotional service is without limit. Right? Somebody was saying this morning, I will chant maximum. To <laughs> and we said, no, there's no maximum. You have to chant more. So there's no limit to your desires for service to Krishna. So tomorrow we have a big festival, we have a, an important Rathi Atra right in, down in Kuala Lumpur in the city there and there are many important people invited to come, different government people coming. So it's an important program. We hope we can, can have a nice program and make a nice presentation of Krishna consciousness for everyone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I have a question about uh, Jar Jarasana. Uh, I read from the book that Jarasana is also a follower of Vedas, Vedic uh, principle, and also he worships Lord Vishnu. Mm -hmm. Yes. But why he is a demon and killed by Krishna? Yeah, he is a demon. His daughters were all married to Kamsa. <laughs> when Krishna killed Kamsa, then all of his daughters went back to their father, crying, Oh, Krishna killed our husband. And Jarasandha wanted to kill Krishna. And he came many times to fight with Krishna. Every time Krishna defeated his whole army and sent Jarasandha away. They fought 17 times and Krishna defeated him every time. So finally it happened that Maharaj Yudhisthira wanted to do the Rajasuya sacrifice. So they went to see Jarasandha because Jarasandha, 
he was a king, and if any king opposes the person performing the sacrifice, then you cannot do the sacrifice. So in order to do the yagya, they had to first of all eliminate Jarasandha. So Krishna went with Bhima and Arjuna in disguise and he dressed up as Brahmanas. Because they knew Jarasandha liked to give charity to Brahmanas. Just like Bali Maharaj. Bali Maharaj was the king of the demons and he was also giving charity. So that was when Lord Vamanadev came as a Brahmana to beg charity. So Krishna went with Arjuna and Bhima and they dressed up like Brahmanas. And they came in front of Jarasandha and said, we want some charity from you. <coughs> so Jarasandha looked at them and he thought, these people don't look like Brahmanas. <laughs> Brahmanas are usually weak and skinny people. But Arjuna and Bhima, and they were very powerful Kshatriyas. And they, when they spoke, they did not speak soft and gentle, but they spoke with a voice like thunder. So Jarasandha thought, what kind of Brahmanas are these? <laughs> but anyway, all oh, right, you want charity, what charity do you want? <laughs> they said, we want a fight with you. <laughs> So then they revealed who they were and Jarasandha looked at them and said, Well, Arjuna, you're not strong enough. I'm, you wouldn't be a good fight for me. I'm not going to fight you. You would be too easy for me. <laughs> and he said to Krishna, he said, The last time I fought you, they said the eighteenth time, you ran away, so you were a coward, so I'm not going to fight you again. <coughs> but he said, Bhima, you will be a good fight for me, I will fight you. And so they fought. For many days and days they fought and neither of them could win. But then Lord Krishna gave the clue to how to defeat Jarasandha. He picked up a twig and he split it down the middle. This name Jarasandha means he was, he was born actually in two halves, but the two halves were joined together by a witch named Jara. So he got the name Jara Sanda. So Jaras, so Bhima came rushing forward and he grabbed one of Jarasandha's legs and he ripped up the other leg and he broke it, ripped his body into two halves. So 
right down the middle. And through the two parts so far away. So in this way they defeated, they killed Jara Sangha. Yeah, demons also give charity for their own sense gratification. For their own benefit, not for the pleasure of the Supreme. Right? We give charity in the mood of goodness for the pleasure of Krishna. Okay. Hare Krishna. Okay. Bhagavad Gita ki. Srila Prabhupada. Thank you.